our half-hearted cameras hurting the camera industry from small digicams that still exist to vlogging cameras that really don't do vlogging very well and then also more advanced cameras with weird mixtures of memory cards and features. Of course in the comments if you want to voice your opinion feel free I will potentially respond hit my chair first and then respond. Most obvious one I've seen recently is with all of these vlogging cameras, at least the marketing companies, marketing companies, <laughs> you're getting out, you're moving around. The camera needs to be able to deal with motion, sensor-based stabilization, and a lens, at least one lens in the system that allows you to have, you know, good stabilization inside of it with a wide focal length. Gonna start by picking on Panasonic with their G100 that they really pushed towards that. 12 millimeter lens to start off. I don't think you can buy this, just body only. So you're gonna get that lens and it's a 2X crop factor. Can work, but then the camera doesn't have any stabilization inside. And then Sony does the same exact thing with their ZV cameras. I actually like the idea of the ZV-E10. It's just, it's old technology in there. It doesn't have sensor-based stabilization. And even 30 frames a second, 4K is a additional crop. So if you want to do actual vlogging, you do have some lens options on Sony, which is nice. The older 10 to 18 millimeter, I think, is probably the best option. But their newer lens that basically replaces it does not have stabilization. So I don't understand the logic there. There's ZV-1, which is the first one inch, one type one, whatever you want to call it, camera. Again, with the lens focal length, it wasn't wide enough to really do vlogging that well because you would want to be using digital stabilization in addition to, I think it has lens stabilization in this case. You just don't get there. And then their response was... Slightly cheaper yet worse ZV-1F camera. It just doesn't make sense to me why they would go halfway with it when they are spending the time to put a new lens in there. Then they use an old sensor that doesn't do phase detect. And then the lens doesn't have stabilization in it. So you're going to be relying on the digital stabilization. In addition to the contrast-based autofocus on the 1F, it also has really bad rolling shutter performance which is something when you're doing vlogging, you need a quick readout on the sensor so it looks a little bit better or a lot, a lot better. Sony, please, it doesn't make sense. With these unusual camera releases that don't really make sense in practicality, of course it can work. It doesn't mean it's gonna work very well. It doesn't mean it's gonna work a lot better than a phone. So when you're gonna bring someone in from just having a phone, they want a dedicated camera. The idea of, wow, this thing can really do a great job potentially for me compared to my phone. And then they buy something like that uh, ZV-1F camera and they find out, wow, it looks really bad. It's focusing off because it's, it doesn't use phase detect. Once they learn about the differences between different types of autofocus systems, and then they're stuck with this expensive camera but then they start using their phone more and more again, or they upgraded their phone and that's even better. Just a few things they could have done to really let that camera shine compared to phones or whatever. One inch or type one cameras in general seem to be pretty expensive, although this is at a nice discount at the moment. I don't think many of these type one, one inch sensor cameras have phase detect in them like the G7 series. I don't think the Panasonic ones do as well. The Sony, at least some of the later Sonys do, but the price of something like the RX100 Mark 7, $1,300. Is it really worth that much? I don't know. If a new person comes into dedicated cameras, they see all these and they say, you want $1,300 for this thing with a pretty nice zoom lens, you know, it looks functional, but they wouldn't even suggest the idea to themselves to spend that much money. Then they look at the 1 over 2.3 inch sensor cameras, think, oh, these are a little bit more reasonable. Is this going to do what I need? And chances are, that's a big nope. Or they see something like these Kodak junk cameras, something like the Coolpix B500. That's my most popular video on the YouTube channel. It's not to say that it's a terrible camera. It's not to say that it's the worst thing ever. And at least in this case, the zoom lens in there can get you better photos from distance compared to pretty much any phone, except for some of the phones actually have optical zoom lenses in them now. However, the autofocus, everything about this is just not great. The funny thing is that they had a B600, but they discontinued that because it was worse in many ways than the V500. 
where people want to get into dedicated cameras, they get in, they spend that money, and then they have a bad experience. Mirrorless cameras, the Canon RF system, they added the APS-C cameras, you got the R10 and the R7, but then they released two very unexciting lenses from EFM, they revised them, and both of them started at 18 millimeters. EFM lens started at 15 millimeters, which is a, a good thing for many situations, getting that wider focal length was nice, where a person wanted to do vlogging with the R10 or something like that, but they have 18 millimeters, they have no sense-based stabilization, and they're not gonna be buying the R7. I think a lot of it might come down to cost factors, manufacturing situations. All I can do is speculate on that. The monstrosity camera, Coolpix P1000. I used one for a very short amount of time. This is amusing, but it's massive, and uh, I guess it serves a very specific niche purpose. Here's another thing that messes up the camera industry. Minolta, fake brand. I had actually, this was at my local camera shop for a while. You can't buy new batteries for this thing. I could not find them anywhere. This thing is selling and it's getting, people People are interested in this camera. They come to my video specifically for this somehow. And then it's just a really bad experience for the user. Canon ergonomics have been changing a lot lately on their mirrorless cameras, which is good in a way, but also bad. The good thing is that they're trying new ideas and it doesn't always work with the original EOS R camera that had that slidey thing which some people might lock might lock <laughs> some people might like but a lot of people from what I saw did not like that I like the idea of this camera because it has the two uniform memory card slots two SD card slots they're simple they work easy to find anywhere a lot of cameras especially the higher end ones offer you two different slots and I'm not sure Maybe some people like and prefer having two different memory card types. Personally, I don't find that appealing at all. I had no idea the Z9 has two of the same slot. I thought it had different slots, but it does not. It has the CF Express Type B, two of them. That's cool. So in this case, when you're going high end, you want the best of the best. They give you two of the best. So in this case, I'm very confused. You've got a $6,000 R3 camera has two different memory card types. Why don't you do the Z9 thing, Z9 thing, and give you two of the fastest instead of one of the average and and uh, one of the fast. Wow, they fit a lot of stuff in here. Dual CF Express Type A SD cards. So it's the smaller ones that are a little more expensive, less capacity, but they're consistent. Totally forgot about the Nikon Z30. This is another one where they kind of half-heartedly created this thing. They chopped off the C50's viewfinder. At the very least, Nikon comes with a 16mm lens. However, the camera does not have sensor-based stabilization in it. So you're going to have to use some type of digital form of it. Another thing, it doesn't have H.265 as far as I remember. All that said, camera companies, please try to implement features in ways that excite and impress users, impress people coming into dedicated cameras so that they don't come in, have a bad experience, and then leave. That hurts everyone. That hurts people that are into cameras, dedicated cameras, photography, videography, and want to see this industry grow and get larger again. And it hurts them because they end up getting a return camera. They end up getting just a bad customer experience where that person is no longer going to buy any lenses from them or anything related, no accessories. Maybe it's about cost. Maybe it's about just getting a new refresh quickly maybe it's just they're not seeing these small things that some of us do notice who knows uh, in the comments if you want to voice your own opinion feel free i'll be reading the comments as usual hope you enjoyed the video i'm scott for trophy bonsai thanks